our hands, oh God, we lift our hearts to praise and to worship you, oh God, to give you the fruit of our lips. You are an amazing God, and Father, we bless you. Father, have your way today, oh God, be magnified in our lives, be glorified. Father, in a corporate worship, oh God, Father, we know we're in separate places, oh God, but Father, we welcome you, oh God, whether we're in our bedrooms or living rooms or, or driving or whatever it is that we're doing, oh God, Father, we welcome you to have your way. Father, inhabit the praises of your people. We bring thanks in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, bless the Lord. Let us worship God together as we welcome boundless to lead us forward in worship. Hallelujah. Please you know, join Boundless in worship. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus is living. It's lifted high, it's lifted high, the name of Jesus is lifted high.
broken. I hear a sound of change being broken. I hear a sound of change being broken. Worthy of praise. 
He's so worthy of honor. He's so worthy to be lifted. There's no other name by which man can be saved by the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Our God is so worthy to be praised. Our God is so worthy to be praised. Our God is so worthy to be praised. <laughs> so I lift my hands to you. Because you're worthy to be praised. So I sing this song to you. Hallelujah. Because you're worthy to be praised. So I say holy to your name. Because you're worthy to be praised. Stay holy to your name, God, because you're worthy to be praised. So I bless your holy name because you're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. So we bless your holy name, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Wherever you are, just begin to worship the Lord. If he's worthy to be praised, as we know he is, just begin to, to lift up your voice and lift up your hands and just give God a praise. Hallelujah. God, we bless you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
God, you're worthy to be praised, oh God. You're worthy of glory, honor, dominion, and power. God, you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy to be praised. There's no one like you. We could search the heavens high. We could search the earth below. And Father, we would find that there's no one like you, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are El Shaddai. You are, Father, you are God Almighty. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise, oh God. We give you praise. It, it is our decision, oh God. It's our determination, oh God, to give you praise. God, we give you praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We've decided to give you praise, oh God. And so, Father, we lift up our voices, oh God. We, we turn our attention towards heaven, oh God. And Father, we give you praise, oh God. We make your name large, oh God. We magnify you, oh God. We extol you, oh God. Father, we make you bigger than anything, oh God, in our lives, oh God. We make you large. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we give you praise. We give you praise. Praise is calmly for the saints. It is what is what we were created to do. If we fail at everything else, we won't fail at our praise in God because it's that for that reason we were created. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Once again, people, welcome to Zone Bones. Thank you, hallelujah, for always worshiping God in spirit and in truth. As we continue with our worship experience, we have an anointed man of God, a, a trailblazer, a veteran in the faith, hallelujah, none other than Apostle Edwin Lindsay. He's going to come forth with a word of exhortation, and then following the exhortation, he'll lead us in intercessory prayer. Breakers, in the chat, can you just make some noise and bless God as we welcome Apostle Hallelujah. Edwin Lindsay as he takes forth the floor? Well, praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. Once again, we are so glad to be together in unity of faith and in the power of God. Amen. And so uh, when I got a call from the lead man of God, uh, there at Ms. Hine. The other day, he mentioned to me uh, that he would have me to come back and share a little bit at what the Lord had put on my heart. And as individuals that have been fasting and praying, and I, I'm not just saying that for breakers only, but I'm saying that for all believers in the body of Christ that are fasting and praying and believing God for his word, um, we have also been mandated by a leader to study the Bible from beginning to end. And so this morning when I got up and I was praying and, and getting ready for service, the Lord put on my heart to share with you and I as well about the need for prayer from beginning to end. And so I, I didn't quite grab hold to that until God revealed to me that from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, we are to pray. There's prayer going all the time. You cannot exclude prayer, hallelujah, hallelujah. You cannot exclude prayer even when you're reading the word of God, amen. Because as we read the word of God, we realize God is the author and the finisher of our faith. And God is a spirit. And he that worships God must worship God in truth and in spirit. Amen. And so when we begin to read it, you know, for each chapter, there's specific scriptures that God wanted us to, you know, wanted to bring out to us as a body of believers, those who walk by faith, to know that we have to continue to pray. Paul spoke about it in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17 when he says that pray without ceasing. Amen. And that means we can't stop. So no matter where we're at in reading the word of God and no matter where we're at in studying the word of God, we must have a strong prayer life. Amen. It is impossible to believe the Bible without a prayer life. It is impossible to obey God without a prayer life. It is impossible for your visions and your dreams to come to pass without a prayer life. God says there's prayer from the beginning when he created the universe and everything that's in it and above it and all of that. God says this to pray. Amen. And so I want to back it up because when God spoke to me, he says, I want you to go and talk to them um, specifics about prayer in the book of Acts. 
Amen. So I'm not going to go through all of it, but I'm going to give you specific things Brad brought out. Why are you praying? You know what I mean? Why are you studying the book of Acts? It says this prayer in the upper chambers. They went to pray. Prayer is included, all conclusive in everything. He spoke about prayer for intercessors. Amen. He spoke about for successors in prayer. Amen. So Jesus was about to leave, but he gave his disciples a mandate to go and wait until the Holy Ghost comes. Amen. And then he spoke to him and he said, and while you are there, you know, just don't be having a common, just a regular conversation. You need to be praying, you know, prayer and worship in chapter two, verse 24 and through 47, prayer and observation. Chapter three, three and one, prayer for boldness of witnessing, four, 23 and 31. Prayer for the ministry work, prayer for martyrdom, prayer for Samaritans and sorcerers, you know what I mean? Prayer for those who are outside the body of Christ, those who are not in not line with God, those who have been deceived by witchcraft and all those type of things. We still have the authority and the power to pray for them, amen. And they shall be delivered, amen. They shall be free. God is ready for his hand to move in a supernatural and an unusual way. Before I get through, we're gonna pray and pray this thing through because God is setting us up for miracles to happen. Miracles meaning things that we didn't do, but we know God did, amen. God is always doing miracles, but none of this is possible without prayer. Prayer for a converted person or to convert individuals into believers. Amen. We have to pray. Prayer when Peter was in prison. I'm giving you some people that was there. Prayer of Cornelius. Prayer with fasting. We've been talking about that on a regular basis. Prayer in the riverside, prayer in dungeons, prayer in committal, prayer in shipwreck. This is Paul talking. Prayer for stricken, strict fevers or stricken by fever. We can pray about the coronavirus and see God's hand move. Prayer is essential. Prayer is in every word of God. Prayer cannot happen if you don't believe. Amen. Two ingredients we must be able to do when we pray is to believe by faith. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. And it speaks also about the prayer in inspiring inspiration by the spirit. God is the spirit. He that worship God must worship God in spirit and in truth. So we have to pray in the spirit. Amen. We have to walk in the spirit. We have to talk in the spirit. Amen. And when we're reading God's word, we ought to be spiritually set forth to read the word and get meat and revelation, wisdom, and knowledge beyond human comprehension because the natural man cannot perceive the things of God. Hallelujah. But we can. That, that ought to make you want to shout right there. Amen. The more I've been learning about how to pray, amen, you know, the, the sadness went away. The heaviness went away. I can't help but to have joy. And people say, why are you, why are you smiling all the time now? Why are, you, why are you so excited when what I just had a bad day? You ain't never supposed to have a bad day when your prayer life is lined up with the will of God. Amen. You might feel it, but it's gone. It should never last throughout the whole day. And I'm speaking sincerely. You know, I'm not rebuking nobody, but come on, saints of God. We got to come together in unity and to believe God for every word. Amen. Prayer for the Israel state. Prayer for continuous ministry. We're being set up now. We're about to go back into our various churches. I don't think this is just breakers. Amen. But breakers, I want us definitely to be included in that. But we are to get ready to go back into the house of God. This thing is not permanent. This is not permanent. If you've been praying, then you know it's not permanent. Then you know that God shall make us strong even in our weakness. Amen. Let the weak say that I'm strong and the strong say that I'm weak. And then finally, prayer for 
conquest over Satan. I say that again, prayer for conquest over Satan. When we pray, we pray heaven down here in this world, amen, and Satan can't raise hell in it when we pray. We pray heaven down. That's to keep hell from rising. I'm not cussing. Thanks to God. Do you have a prayer closet? Do you pray in secret? And if you can honestly say that you're doing it, keep doing it. And if you haven't done it, find your prayer closet. So you pray in secret. God will reward you openly. Now, you don't mind, I'm going to move to the next level, but I'm going to hold the service up. Amen. Because I'm not the speaker. But we're going to pray. Amen. Is that all right? God bless you. Father, I thank you for all that you've done and all that you're about to do. And Holy Father, I thank you, Father God, for uh, the leadership in the body of Christ as a whole. As we say it once again, Lord, we know it's just not about us. It's about the body. Father God, the head has already spoken. It's already chosen us to be vessels, Father God, to bring the good news. And Father, the good news shall we bring. We will not do it out of duty, but we'll do it out of love. But where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, God. We thank you for the liberty to be able to come forth and to proclaim the gospel. That Father, no matter what the enemy is trying to say, he's just talking. But God, we're not talkers, we're doers as well, Lord. We thank you for the power of your spirit that remains right now, that sets up in our hearts, oh God, and where your spirit begins to speak to us and tell us greater things shall we do in your name. Father, there's greatness ahead right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, that you prepared us, Father, from the beginning of time to win this battle. For the battle was not ours, Lord, but the Lord. And God, we thank you, Father God, for revelation, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Thank you, Father God, for creating a new heart and the right spirit in us. Uh, thank you, Father God, that we can pray for leadership, not only in our own local church, but around the world, God. We're praying for those, Father God, right now that are homeless and disenfranchised. We're praying for the sick and the shut in. We're praying for those that right now, Father God, with nowhere to go, with no place to live, we're asking God that you teach us, Father God, what it means to intercede on their behalf. Father God, you said in your word that the poor we would have with us always. And God, the more, the more I pray, the more we pray, we find out, God, that it's not just about us, but it's about your people. Thank you, Father, that you said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek your faith and then turn from their wicked ways. Yet shall they hear from heaven, and you shall heal the land, and the prayers of those that are trained in that place, Father God, will be heard. And right now, Lord God, we're looking to you, the author and the finish of our faith. And I believe, God, now, right now, Lord God, that you are just moving in a special way upon Breakers Covenant International Church. I pray for our leader and for all the leadership there, and God, for everyone that's listening to this service today, may it be a blessing to the ears, God. May it touch your hearts, Father God, touch their home. May the blood of Jesus be over their doorposts, God, to protect them, to provide for them, Lord God, to let your word stand high and lift it up in their hearts, oh God, that when they wake up in the morning, they won't complain, they won't be in sorrow, they won't be in pain, but God, they'll look past all those things and say, Lord, if it had not been for you who was on our side, where would we be? So God, we give you praise and honor right now. Right now, Lord God, we do it while we have breath in this body, Lord God. We lift up your name because there's no other, other name given unto us but the name of Jesus Christ. We even say, Abba, Father, in the name of Jesus, have your way. Put joy in your people's heart, God. Put the joy there again. The joy of the Lord is our salvation. God, let us be able to rejoice. Again, I say rejoice in Jesus' name. 
So we ask you once again, oh God, to do what you always do. And that's to encourage your people and allow us to live by grace one day at a time. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep praying, saints. Keep praying. Hallelujah, 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 and amen. Thank you so much, Apostle Lindsay. Hallelujah, for sure. I don't know if you, you feel what I feel, but prayer for sure sensitizes your heart. It makes you so appreciative of the things that God that God has done for us. And it gives us a burden for, for those who are, not, who are not saved. As Apostle Lindsay mentioned, he was praying for those who are, who are not saved. I'm not sure if you're feeling that, that burden as, as he prayed and you, you just feel that sense like, man, God, I'm, I'm in the household of faith and there's so many people who are not a part of the household of faith. There's so many people who don't know the love of Jesus. There, there's so many people who've never felt his love and arms around them. There's so many people that there were hard days that, that has never been comforted you know, by the love of Jesus. But I know what it is to be comforted by the love of Jesus. Even if I started with a difficult day, by the end of the day, sometime I see God come in and he intervenes and his, his loving arms save us. So thank you so much, Apostle Lindsay, for rendering yourself before the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we move forward with our service, I want to welcome Evangelist um, Novice Abram. She's going to lead us in our giving. And just before she comes, I want to read just the reasons why we give. Hallelujah. And if you're following along, you can type them in the chat. Hallelujah. So reasons why we give. Number one, giving reflects God's character. Hallelujah. It is like God to give. Number two, giving is commanded of God. Number three, giving expresses your trust in God. Number four, giving advances the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Number five, giving makes you happy. Number six, giving makes you healthier and live longer. So let us move forward and let us worship God in our giving as we welcome Evangelist Novice as she comes forward to lead us in this part of our worship. Praise the Lord and bless the Lord, people of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Truly, God is good unto his people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, we just bless the Lord. We thank him for all that he has done. Amen. And in this order of service, amen, we just want to bless the Lord in our tithes. We want to bless the Lord in our offerings. We want to bless the Lord with all our first increase. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For truly, God is worthy. Amen. This morning, I want to read Malachi. Malachi 3 and 10, for the word of the Lord reads, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so that there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the window of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Amen. That's the Lord. He said, try it. Try this. This, I'm telling you, the Lord does not lie. Amen. Amen. Everything that he has spoken, he will truly do. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you want to give, amen, if you would join us, we just, we, 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 we offer this, uh, um, you to come and, and, and just worship with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In your tithes and your, your offering. Amen. It is a great thing to do this thing. Hallelujah. I think about even in the book of Acts, how, how, how in those days, uh, what Peter, amen, they laid the, 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 the increase, they laid their offers at the apostles' feet, that everybody would have things in common, amen, hallelujah, there was nobody lacking, because why, because the church took care of things, because they laid it at the apostles' feet, they brought their tithes, they brought their offers, they brought their increase, amen, so amen, so I want to give you, um, a ways that you can uh, send your tithes and your offering in. You can send it in by uh, Cash App, which is dollar sign Breaker CC, or you can send it in from uh, our page, which is BreakerCC.tv, and you can tap on Give, Amen, or Rim.org, or you can send it in to our address, which is eight eight zero one Woodward, and that's in Detroit, Michigan. 
48202. Amen. And so I just want to remind you, you know, it, it may not be uh, that lucrative thing that you need. It may not be that tangible thing that you need, but amen. It may come in a form of peace. Amen. So many people have money, but they have no peace. They have no joy. We need to restore the joy of our salvation. We got children out there. Amen. And out of our obedience, God is able to release that thing. Amen. So hallelujah. We just thank God in the name of Jesus for all that you have done, all that you're going to do. God, we thank you for this time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah of giving, oh God. We give with the spirit of thanksgiving for all that you have done. Hallelujah, we look upon you, oh God. Hallelujah, which is the ultimate giver. You are the one that have given us the power to obtain wealth. You are the one that gives us our peace. You are the one that gives us our joy. Hallelujah, we thank you, oh God. Hallelujah for the manifestations of your glory. Hallelujah in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah in your churches today. Day, oh God, in the name of Jesus, as your people will so, oh God, hallelujah, we thank you, oh God, that every need is met, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name, amen, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The joy of the Lord, it is our strength, and it's definitely more blessed to give than it is to receive, hallelujah. So I pray everyone took the time and is taking the time to render their gifts unto the Lord, which is our act of worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Now we're going to go forward and we're going to do BAB time. And BAB is an acronym. It stands for Be a Blessing. And it's a portion of each worship Sunday experience that we designate to host a random drawing. The winner of the drawing receives a monetary gift via cash app, but for those who are able to do so. So I'm going to grab our BAB time box here and I'm going to give it a nice shake in your viewing here and a nice twirl. Close my eyes. I'm going to randomly draw a name. This is where the intercessors pray that I draw my own name. I don't know if the intercessors are praying. Hallelujah. Let's see who is the winner of this week's baptism. Oops, I think I ripped it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The winner of this week's bab, bab time is none other than Amari Francis. Can we make some noise for Amari? And I, I'm sorry, I ripped it, everyone. <laughs> so let me make sure I can make what, what it is. I'm sorry, Amari. His cash tag is dollar sign AK Francis 28. It is dollar sign AK Francis 28. Congratulations to Amari a winner of this week's bab time. One more time, it's dollar sign AK Francis 28. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Congratulations, Amari. Remember your mother and father <laughs> that your days may be long upon the earth, amen. Now we're gonna welcome none other than our trusty and our faithful church administrator, none other than Pastor Chantel Hicks as she comes forward and do our announcements. Let's make give God a praise for Pastor Chantel, she comes forward with our kingdom announcements for today. Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I am Chantel, and these are your kingdom announcements for today, January 23rd, 2022. I'm sorry. So as you can see, we are still virtual. And so we want to constantly remind you that during the month of January, we will be having our worship services um, virtually. And so today we are on Zoom and we also have the Facebook Live option. We do want to remind you to stay focused and don't do anything that you would not do if you were in the physical house of God. Amen. So we do um, plan on enjoying one another still in the presence of the Lord, even though we are virtual. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we are continuing our journey through the Bible. Hallelujah. We have um, one, another week in January to go. We have three weeks 
down. Amen. Hallelujah. And the numbers are rising. We've went from about 40 to averaging about 45, 50 now. So it's climbing. Amen. Um, please remember, I see visitors and all kinds of people that are not members. It is okay if they would like to join us. Also, we would like to remind you to have a notebook. Hallelujah. Have um, a pen. Have um, things that you know, that will help you capture things that God may be trying to speak to you during that time. Um, please do not lose this time. Um, do not lose what God may be trying to speak to you on a given morning, whether it's from a focus point or whether it's just from something that you catch um, during the scripture reading. We also want to thank everyone who volunteers to read. Hallelujah. They, they wake up, they're up early, they're sharp, and they're reading with boldness and with clarity. So we want to thank all of our readers. Amen. And we want to continue on with the same strength um, as we move forward. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, well, we're in our last week of January. We're approaching our last week of January. And so uh, we do have our January challenge, which is to recite the 66 books of the Bible in the order as written. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I do have about four or five people who are interested in doing this challenge. So please look forward to um, seeing those videos or seeing those challenges if they make it through. Amen. The way this works is that you would memorize the order of the books of the Bible. You would then schedule a virtual appointment with myself. And then if you get them right, you will win a prize. And upon winning that prize, we will also display your um, victory video, if you will, your victory video so that everyone can see that it was right. You did it right and you did not cheat. So please, there's still enough time to join us during that um, in this challenge um, before the month of January is out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We are approaching our last week of our 21 day Daniel fast. Amen. Hopefully you all have been keeping up with the reading schedule, um, journey through the Bible. It helps. Hopefully you all have been um, gathering and, and maintaining those nuggets that Sister Simone releases um, for a couple of weeks. There's also a post that was posted yesterday by Aramis um, of another video by Sister Simone encouraging us and refining us in, 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 in this Daniel fast. So please um, take it seriously. Please um, stay focused. Um, during this time, and you will hear more about um, the day of fast um, later on in the service as to how we are going to finish this um, journey out. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. At this time, I am going to ask if our very own Miss Nikisha Francis can come off of mute and give the special announcement from the success suite. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so I just wanted to share really quickly and invite mm -hmm. everyone out to this virtual workshop series. Um, there's a saying that says um, one monkey don't stop the show. And so that pretty much means that whatever obstacle you face, it doesn't get to stop or derail you. And so COVID doesn't get to derail us from progress and from moving forward. And so in the, that same vein, we've had to pivot. And so for the entire month of February, I'm going to be hosting a series of virtual workshops that's really geared towards positioning us and enabling us to thrust and to move forward into to being really successful and setting us up to win. And so each Tuesday evening for the entire month of February, we're offering an absolutely free workshop that's really gonna help to thrust you. And so February 1st, we're gonna have a vision board workshop. It's not your typical vision board and it's entitled a clear view. And so it's gonna be completely different. It's not gonna be clipping paper and sticking them on a board, but we're really gonna be diving into why you need to have a clear view, the purpose of having vision. And so we're gonna be having a guest speaker come out on that evening, Miss Ann Winbush of Visionaries Hair Studio. She's gonna be talking to us that evening um, and diving into that. So she's um, Ann Winbush, visionary, the owner a visionaries hair studio and the owner of Abundant Place Airbnb. She's a real estate investor as well. On February 8th, 
We have DIY Your Life, which is a health and wellness. And so we're taking a holistic approach, whereas you're coming out and you're going to be talking about, we're going to be discussing ways that we can really take ownership of our life. So it's going to be talking about the entire person, mind, body, and spirit covering everything. And so we have coming in um, Miss Billy Sterling Lewis from the island of Tobago. She's going to be joining us virtually, and she is a counselor psychologist, a holistic life coach. She's an author. She's the managing director of Impact Change um, Concepts, which is a therapy, licensed therapy. Um, and she's the owner of Impact Therapy Store. And so she's going to be joining us on that evening. Um, February 15th, we have Your Money, Your Call. So this is a finance workshop. So we're going to be diving into managing our money, whatever money that is that we have, how do we make it work for us? So really diving into that. Um, and so we have our very own Simone Brissett Tate, first generation legacy builders. She's a financial consultant, financial coach, and she's going to be walking us through that. And then we're going to end it with ready, set, go, goal mapping workshop on the 22nd of February. And we're going to be setting goals as we move forward and we thrust into this new year. And so um, each workshop, we're going to be having materials. So when you sign up, register on Eventbrite. There's a link that's going to be going out. Um, you can find it on Facebook. You can find it on Instagram. You can contact me directly. You can contact the email address, but register. You're going to get the maximum benefit if you come to all four workshops. It's going to be every Tuesday night throughout the entire month of February from 7 to 8.30, just an hour and a half from the comfort and safety of your homes where we get to go ahead and dive into the things that's really going to be position us and, and help us to really thrust forward and thrive. And so it's going to be an awesome series. You're going to get workbooks. You're going to get worksheets. It's a workshop because you're going to get the tools. You're going to get the things in your hands that's really going to help to propel you and to push you forward. It's not going to just be people telling you what you have to do or just yelling at you, but you're going to really come prepared to do the work that's really going to challenge you and really going to set you up to win. And so that's why it's called Poise to Win, because when you leave at the end of the four weeks, you're going to be set up, you're going to be poised to win. You're going to be in a posture to really succeed. So I invite you to sign up. I invite you to invite somebody else to sign up. If you say, hey, I got this covered, you might know a sister, a friend, a cousin, a co-worker, somebody that can really benefit from this workshop series. And so I really invite you to invite others. It's absolutely free. People sell this. I'm not selling it because I really want to pour into the lives of others. And so it's absolutely free. These um, speakers are coming in because they are of the same heart, same mind, where they want to see people win. And so I really want to um, invite you out and invite you to invite others. Please like, please share, please spread the word. Please let's do this together. Amen. And so that's all I want to share about that. Poise to win. God bless you, everyone. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Ms. Nakisha. Um, for that beautiful announcement. Again, you can find this flyer on our Breakers family page. If you need to retract it, there is um, some of our group chats and I will make sure that it is sent out via email and any links um, that need to be sent out so that everyone can have um, equal access. So thank you so much. Um, hallelujah. Congratulations to Mr. Amari Francis. He is our winner of Bad Time this week. Amen. If you would like for your name to go into that box, that cash tag, please contact myself, send me your cash tag, and I will make sure that it goes into that box. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, we do want to always remind you to pray. We just heard an excellent um, exhortation about prayer from our very own Apostle Lindsay. And so we want to constantly reiterate the importance of prayer. Um, we ask that you keep our first family, Aramis, Rosanna, their children, um, their parents, their extended family. We ask that you continue to keep them lifted um, in your prayer. Amen. Um, we ask that you continue to lift up the Myrick family as they lay their uncle to rest um, on this morning, actually. Uh, we ask that you keep Brother Demetrius Barker, who lost his great aunt, 
um, I believe between yesterday or today, she passed away. We want you to just continue to keep individuals in your prayers, things you may know about and things you may not know about. Amen. We just ask that you stay postured. Um, men ought to always pray and not faint. No matter what's going on in your life, we should always pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Um, hallelujah. First Timothy 5 and 17 reads, give double honor to spiritual leaders who handle their duties well. This is especially true if they work hard at teaching the word of God. And so breakers, I do invite you to blow up the chat right now as we give double honor, hallelujah, to our lead servants of this dynamic ministry, Aramis and Rosanna Hines, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Any visitors, if this is your first time joining us, or if they, are you are a returning visitor, we do welcome you to the Empowerment Zone. Yes, it can still be the Empowerment Zone from wherever you are sitting right now. Hallelujah, you can declare that where you are, that God is welcome. Hallelujah, he's welcome to empower you where you are. Hallelujah, we pray that you are blessed. Hallelujah, by the word, we pray that you will come back and you will join us again. Hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you. These are all of your announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Chantel, for leading us through those announcements. Hallelujah. Now we have come to an excited time. We get to introduce our leaders. Okay. Break is continue to blow up the chat. Please continue to send shout outs to the Aramis and Rosanna. I often say we have the best leaders on this side of heaven. We truly have treasures. We have gems that God has given us. And, and as far as, as Aramis goes, he is the best example of Jesus Christ I've ever seen in the earth. In the earth. He literally follows God. He, does, he has his ears postured and tuned towards heaven in the same way that Jesus had his ears postured and tuned, and tuned towards heaven. He's truly sold his life out to God, and he only does what pleases the Lord. So breakers, let us put our hands together, or virtual hands, and let us blow up the chat as we welcome our founder and senior pastor, Aramis D. Hines Sr. Let's make some noise for him as he comes. All right. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. And God bless you on this beautiful uh, Sunday. Um, we're right at afternoon now. So this Sunday afternoon, um, I don't know how many of you are excited about um, the white snow that is on the ground, uh, but I love to see the snow, even if I don't want to drive in it, even if I don't want to be out in it. I love to see it because it's something about how when you see the white cover the entire earth or the entire community where you live, it's a, it's a reminder of the beautiful holiness of our God and how he, he and his presence in our lives, he has a way of making us look much better than we would look otherwise. And so I don't know about you, but I love the Lord and I am so excited about all that God is and all that he's doing uh, in the earth right now. And I'm thanking God for each and every one of you, uh, thanking God for our senior leadership, um, and you know who you are. Apostle Lindsay, thank you for rendering to, your, to us a, a dynamic exhortation. Uh, Pastor Kwame, thank you for uh, just keeping us moving in the flow of the spirit and offering uh, the spiritual wisdom that you, you release uh, Sunday after Sunday. Uh, we really appreciate you. Uh, to our uh, administrator, uh, Pastor Chantel, God bless you. Thank you for all of the work that you do. Um, this ministry would not be able to function virtually or otherwise without uh, the support that you offer. So thank you so much um, to our entire administrative team, uh, to my beautiful wife and our children. Uh, they're constantly uh, making adjustments <laughs> to keep things going. And they're in virtual school trying to find ways to make things easier for me. And so I truly thank God for each of them. They, they have been a, a great strength uh, throughout the past two years uh, as we've been navigating this global pandemic. But I want you to know that God is on the throne and uh, he's worthy to be praised and he's moving in the earth. He never stopped moving. Sometimes we did, but, but God never stopped moving. <laughs> he didn't look at a, a, a virus and say, oh no, let me stay away. You know, he didn't look at the hostility in the land and say, oh no, I think it's, things are gonna fall apart. No, he's God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And so we praise him for just being who he is 
uh, to all of our uh, virtual guests, whether you're connecting through Zoom or through Facebook. God bless you. All our visitors, first time or otherwise, uh, we send love to you. We're so happy you came to join with us. And uh, our sincere prayer is that you are blessed uh, during this time of worship, because this is the em empowerment zone. And uh, we're only here to change. We're only here uh, to change. We, we appreciate all of the change that's taken place up to now, but we are here to continue to be changed, to be transformed by the renewing of our mind so that we can prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Um, I'm also want to take time to thank God for all of the facilitators. And uh, we've been blessed each morning at 6.15 uh, to have an, an awesome uh, Christ-hearted individual uh, facilitating our, our Bible reading uh, each morning. And uh, we've been blessed every day. We're so appreciative of their time, uh, away their time in prayer and, and just preparing. Uh, we appreciate everyone that's joining in the morning. You can feel the strength. You can feel the unity. And it's something that's very powerful. It's not just a concept for this ministry anymore. It's becoming a way of life. And so I thank God for that. I thank God for all that just uh, had a birthday, whether it was, uh, uh, whether it's today or whether it was last week. Um, I know that we had our own evangelist, Deidre Payne, had a birthday on yesterday. And so we're celebrating you, uh, Evangelist Payne. We love you so much. And we're so happy to have you as part of this family, you and the work that you do with Heartfelt. Um, thank you. God bless you. And also, we want to celebrate new life. Uh, Jubilee is here, you all. Uh, Jubilee is here. Uh, Travis and Alina are uh, the parent of another beautiful child, uh, Jubilee Joy Williams. And so we celebrate with them. I I'm sure they're connecting or will con are connected or will connect in, in, in some time and listen. Uh, but we want you to know we're praying for complete restoration and healing. And we're just celebrating as God uh, fills your quiver. Um, I also, uh, while I'm on it, I want to uh, take a moment just to, to ensure uh, that we, we we're maintaining our, our focus and, and our, 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 our strength and our passion as it relates to this fast. Uh, we were so blessed uh, on this past Sunday to receive a word from Pastor T'Challa Pinkert. And I wanna bring back to our remembrance some of the things that the Lord spoke uh, very briefly, just some bullet points that I'll read off. Number one, the focus was the awesomeness of the power and the promises of God and the importance of the, the Breakers family having the power and the promises of God as the foundation uh, for our lives. So, uh, this was uh, the, the, the main scripture is root out of Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. Some of the points he brought up was, number one, the most undervalued and underutilized gift that God has given us is time. He encouraged us to make sure that we're not waiting to do tomorrow what God has given us the grace and, and, and the direction to do today. Another point, I have lived in the goodness of God. He celebrated having lived in the goodness of God. Another point, why are you on the Daniel fast? He brought this up as the Lord led him. And he said, what you do is attached to the why. He encouraged us to make sure we're not just doing a Daniel fast out of duty, but that there's an expectation that we have coming out of uh, this Daniel fast. Um, then he brought up John 14, uh, 4 verse number 14. And he, he, he talked about how Jesus declares that his meat, his food, was to do the will of the Father and to finish the work that God called him to do. And he asked the question, what work has God called for you to do? Uh, his work was to bring glory to God. Jesus did what he did to glorify the Father. What work has God called you to do? Another point he brought up was make the promises of God the foundation of our lives. He reiterated it that we are to ensure that the promises of God are the foundation by which we live our lives. Uh, so often we forget and allow our emotions to take over our lives. And so this was a gentle reminder to us. You have emotions, but don't let emotions have you. Be overtaken by the word, the promises of God as revealed through his word. Another point he brought up, he says, I'm a, I'm a recipient of the goodness and the promises of God. The promises of God are seen in and through the life of Jesus and the promises of God 
are the word of God. And because Jesus is the living word, you can find the promises of God visibly through the life of Jesus Christ demonstrated uh, in the earth. He also said we can find the goodness and the promises of God through the examples of Jesus Christ. And we also can find every promise of God in a uh, revealed in scripture. And he challenged us to claim these promises as we're reading through the entire Bible, to claim, claim these promises for our lives and do not move from them. God promised to bring a savior. And talking about how do we know God will keep his promises? Because the greatest promise that he could make to any of us was to bring the Messiah into the world. And he didn't just say he would bring the savior. He brought Jesus into the world. He is a promise keeper. Um, he also brought up this point, which I know resonated with a lot of us. We don't fight for victory. We fight from victory. We are not defeated. We know no defeat. We only know victory. We're accustomed to the ways of victory, to the sound of victory, to an atmosphere of victory, to the joy of victory, to the celebration of victory, to the feast in the victory. Everything attached to our lives, uh, uh, it, it resounds from a place of victory. And so our warfare is not to win. Our warfare is to make sure we don't give up grounds that God has already placed into our hands. Uh, and so he says the victory attached to the Daniel fast is already completed. I don't know about you all, but there's some things that I am truly believing God to do in and through this Daniel fast. And I need you to know that I'm not going to, to leave this fast. I'm not leaving this time in the presence of the Lord without God having done what he did for Daniel, breaking through the Prince of Persia and bringing word and insight into what it is that God has for me and for us and for the body of Christ to do to impact this world. He asked the question, is there anything too hard for God? And as you all know, there's nothing that absolutely nothing that's too hard for God. So make the foundations of your house. He said, make the foundations of your house, the promises of God. Help us to pull up the root. He said, he said, God, help us to pull up the root of every idol in and attached to our lives and help us to make the promises and the power of God the foundation of our lives. I pray that just hearing this, that you're encouraged and reminded that not one word that God speak will return back to him void. It has literally gone to accomplish what it was sent out to do. And when you consider uh, during this, this time of fasting, you'll notice that we have three objectives. The three objectives is number one, get rid of idols. Number two, it's time to cleanse ourselves. And number three, it's time to put on some new clothes. All right, the ridding of idols is literally identifying things that are in our lives that have erected in a place above that where only God in prominence should reside. It is our responsibility once revealed to us that we bring those things down. And some of us, we have voluntarily went to things we know of, uh, but some things have actually risen up that we didn't know were there. And so you see things happening, you sense a little a friction, a little clamor, a little uh, frustration, a little discouragement. You see things rise up, tension, sensitivities, and things like that in your heart and in your home and with your relatives, your friends, and even in church members. Listen, people of God, this is all a part of God's plan. Do not become weary. Do not let the enemy shake you out of your right place. When you ask God to get rid of idols in your life and to reveal them to you, he will show you. But when he shows you, you may not like what he reveals. But the goal is not to get caught up in the emotional thrill, but to make sure that our number one objective is to get rid of the idols, whatever they are. They will show themselves with your will or against your will. They will come to the light. It's God's doing. Don't call it the devil. It's not the devil trying to attack your mind. It's not the devil trying to attack your home. It's not the devil trying to attack the church. No, this is God bringing to the surface those things that have been there, that have been uh, allowed to cause frustration in the dark, have been allowed to cause clamor, and, and confusion in the dark, hidden, unknown, 
God is bringing those things to the surface so he can deal with those areas. Hallelujah. So celebrate when they come to the light. Celebrate when you start feeling those, the, 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 the emotion attached to what you attach yourself to. Hallelujah. Celebrate that you're not numb. Celebrate that you're not without feeling. Celebrate that the fact that you're away from God or distant from God or disconnected from God or not in good standing with God. Celebrate that you have feeling about it and that it doesn't just go over your head like it's nothing because God is doing exactly what he promised to do. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Now, the other thing I'm going to say, I'm going to be done. Fasting. Fasting is for the soul. I know that we are naturally saying no to things that otherwise that we would crave and go after. But the fasting is not for our physical body primarily. When the second portion of God's instructions of cleansing ourselves is brought to light, the fasting is the cleansing. But it's not for your body and the toxins that you put in the body and all the extra gook and weight and stuff that's messed up your ability to flow. All that stuff has its place. But the fasting is so that you can say no. Some of us have lost our ability to say no. And every time something comes, we go with it. Every time we desire something, we, we, we run at it. Every time we don't like something, we react, we respond. We get in our feelings. We get in our emotions. We turn around. We forfeit our assignments. The fasting is not for our bodies as much as it's for our soul. It's so that we can say, no, no, you're not turning around. No, you're not walking away. No, you're not going to allow this thing to offend you. No, you're not going to walk in unforgiveness. No, you're not going to walk in offense. No, you're not going to walk away from the promises of God. No, you're not going to walk away from your assignment. No, you're not going to forsake your family. No, you're not going to forsake your loved ones. No, you're not going to hold that grudge. No, 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 no. The fasting is to be able to afflict our soul so our spirit man can come to the, to the forefront and to the surface surface and shine as the Lord intended for his spirit to shine in our lives. So don't negate this time. It's all holy unto the Lord. And although it may not go the way in, you imagined that it would go, your ways are not God's ways and your thoughts are not his thoughts. There's just too much distance to try to explain between his thoughts and our thoughts and his ways and our ways. And so I want to encourage you in the Lord that way. Because as we're allowing God to deal with our souls, we're preparing, we're preparing ourselves to get dressed with new garments. That cleansing is like taking a shower after a long, hard day out in, 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 a, in a soil environment. And you come and you wash all of that filth off. And you wash off all of the worries of the day and the, the weariness of the, of the work that you had to uh, entail or that was entailed. And you, you allow those fresh waters to just wash you and to purify you. And no one has to tell you what's next, right? No one has to tell you what happens after you're purified. No one has to tell you what you're going to do once you get clean. When you get clean, it's already built in you what you're going to do. You don't go and pick up old things and put them back on. When you get clean, that's the last thing you're thinking about. The issue is getting to the place where you allow God to clean you up. But once you get clean, you go looking for clean things. You go looking for clean ways. You go looking for things that honor God. You go look for relationships that honor God. You go look for the, the ministry that God assigned you to, that you know that he's, he's ordained for you to do. When you allow God to deal with your soul, the clean clothes will, will come afterwards. I believe it's Romans 13, 14 says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and give no occasion to sin. At the end of the day, I don't know what you anticipate in putting on, but at the end of the day, the goal is to be dressed in all that Jesus is. And when you are dressed in all that Jesus is, there's literally nothing that the enemy can do as it concerns your life. And when I say nothing, I mean there's nothing. There is no word curse that he can bring. There's no accusation he can bring your way. There's no test or trial that he can bring your way. There's no storm that can come your way. You will literally dress in the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll sleep in a boat during a storm like Jesus does. That is the goal. The goal is to be dressed in all that God is. Hallelujah. And, and I'm almost done. I got I to gotta give this, this next point, and then we're going we're gonna to move forward. Um, all right. So the year 2022, I've been, I was graced to meet with Apostle uh, Trevor Banks 
for the first time. He he has a network called the Grace Network, and of which we are a part of uh, his spiritual sons. And because uh, my wife and I are spiritual children, and the ministry automatically becomes a part of this network as well. But the Lord uh, spoke some things uh, to him concerning 2022, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna share that, and I'm gonna share another brother. His name is uh, Prophet Joseph Waller, and um, you know, I've been following him for a long time, but the Lord told him for 2022 that this is the year of the word of the Lord. This is the year of the word of the Lord. God is only going to do his work. Anything else that gets done is not God. Because God is only going to do what he said he's going to do. If it's done and he didn't say it, it's not God, even though it gets done. So you have to loose yourself from words that did not come from the Lord. Apostle Lindsay, uh, Apostle Banks followed up and saying that 2022 is the year of double portion, but a double portion of the word, uh, two being the second person of the triune God, Jesus, the walking living word of life. A double portion of the word is meant for 2022. This will be a breakout year for the church where there will be no more casual church. If you're a casual Christian, it won't work out for you. You're either going to go all in or you're going to go all out. This is going to be the year where believers stand up and live out what they've been called to do and what they've been called to be. And so it's no wonder that the Lord dealt with me about this year, prior to any of these words coming forth, prior from even hearing from my own covering about what the Lord was speaking to him, we had already begun our journey reading through the entire Bible as a corporate family. We went beyond just concept. We went beyond just the hype of hearing what this year is about and saying, whoa, this is going to be a cool year of the work. No, we have activated what the Spirit of the Lord has spoken concerning the body of Christ at this particular time. And so everything that we're doing has been assigned and ordained and set in place and blessed and anointed by God. I want to encourage you, don't get weary in doing well. You're going to reap if you faint not. The last thing I'm going to do, I gave you a focus scripture and how many people went and read from Isaiah, I believe it was 44. If you read, put it in the chat, tell me you read it. If you didn't, you still have time to do it. Um, if I got the chapter wrong, let me know. But I believe it was Isaiah uh, chapter number 44. Uh, this week, your reading is Hebrews chapter number 10. Hebrews chapter number 10. And I'm just going to whet your appetite really, really briefly. It's reading at uh, verse 32. It says, uh, think back on those early days when you first learned about Christ. Remember how you remained faithful, even though it meant terrible suffering. Sometimes you were exposed to public ridicule and were beaten, and sometimes you helped others who were suffering the same things. You suffered alone with those who were thrown in jail, and when all you owned was taken from you, you accepted it with joy, and you knew there were better things waiting for you that will last forever. So do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord, my God. So do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that God has promised. I want you to take time and meditate. You'll see in Hebrews chapter 10, literally, 
the, 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 the stepping away, the forsaking of idols. You'll see the purifying of the heart before the Lord. And then you'll see the putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you'll see the word of the Lord spoken this past Sunday about making the promises of God the foundation for how you live your life. What we need is not to leave and go find somewhere else. What we need is not to try to figure out if there's another way to do what we're trying to do. What we need is to just exercise patient endurance. Hang in there. Don't budge. Don't move to the left or to the right. Don't make no abrupt decisions. Do not allow your emotions to have you. You have your emotions. What you need to do, what the Lord has released to us that we are to do, is to make the promises of God the foundation by which we live our lives. At the end of the day, it's not what it looked like, sound like, it's not what you think or anybody else. Is what did God say about it? All right, and an announcement. Uh, we're almost through our Daniel fast. We're not done praying. We're not going to ever stop praying, and we're not going to stop fasting. But this particular fast is coming to an end. Uh, we got a little over a week left. We're going to close out this fast by opening up the building. And how we're going to do it is we've been taking on 24 hour prayer watches, one hour. Uh, is assigned to each person in the church and um, each person that uh, volunteered. And it's not too late to join if you'd like to join now. But on January the 31st, uh, that is going to be Monday, beginning at 12 o'clock a.m. All the way to 11.59 p.m. That is literally 23 hours, 59 minutes, and 59 seconds we will be in prayer in the building. The auditorium where we have our services will be set as what it is, a house of prayer for all people. And we're gonna encourage you, if you want to take that day off of work, you wouldn't be doing yourself no harm. If you can't come in until after work, you still would not be doing yourself no harm. But if you have a prayer assignment, if at all possible, if you can make it into the church to fulfill that assignment in the church, all 24 hours will be staffed with security and qualified, capable men and women of God to maintain and guard the atmosphere of God's presence in the house. Um, and, and especially between the last three and six hours, we're going to invite everyone. Everyone that would like to, of course, we'll have it on Zoom as well. So if you can't come in or, or maybe your, your comfort level isn't there or you have conditions that won't allow, uh, you'll still be able to join in. We'll, we'll be live for 24 hours straight um, via Zoom. You can connect the whole time. But we want to invite everyone in because that following Sunday, we will be reopening the auditorium and we will be assembling ourselves together. The Lord spoke to me and he talked to me about the glory cloud that was in the book of Exodus chapter number 40. And the Bible says that whenever the cloud was over the tabernacle, the people, they couldn't go nowhere. They had to stay where they were. And this is a physical tabernacle that had to be constructed, it had to be built and torn down every time it was time to move. This was the church. This was the ecclesia of the time, you know. You weren't in this one place. You didn't stay in one area. You were on a journey. You had, there were things God was calling you to do. And so you were progressing as he led you. And so when that cloud was there, they couldn't go nowhere. And sometimes we want to go, but we're just anxious. Even with COVID, you know, we're, we're anxious. And we want to throw God's word and say, well, God said that there's no weapon that's formed against. Listen, everything's not a weapon. Sometimes it's just God's timing. God ordained for us to be in our homes during the month of January. But he says, come the beginning of the month, the cloud is lifting and it's going to be time to move again. And if the cloud come down, the glory cloud and say, stay here and tarry in your homes, guess what we're going to do? We're not going to be bent out of shape. We, we live to obey the word of the Lord. 
So if he pauses, we'll be paused. But guess what? When he says go, we're going. It's our responsibility to obey God beyond our comfort and our convenience. It's our responsibility to put no confidence in man, but to put all our trust in God. The Bible says that, that um, let God be true and let every man be a lie. When it comes down to it, I don't care how great and how righteous any of us are. None of us are worth holding on to each other's every word. The only one get, that gets that type of play in our lives should be God himself. That man doesn't live off of bread alone, but we live off of every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So this is the year, a double portion of the word. For us, we're going to try to quadruple the portion. We're going to make sure that there's no famine at 8801 Woodward or any of our personal addresses. We're going to make sure there's no famine on our Facebook posts. We're going to make sure there's no famine in our relationships and our interactions at school, on Instagram, on TikTok. We're going to make sure that there's no famines. We're going to make sure that the word of God is constantly being pushed, that when people encounter us, they encounter the word. And if you're excited about it, then let's take a moment and let's, let's lift up a praise to the Lord and tell him how grateful we are for his superb guidance and leadership in our lives. Come on, give him glory right where you are. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Come on, bless him out of your spirit. He's a good God. He is a light in darkness. Hallelujah. He is a guide. His word is a lamp and a light to our path. Give him praise. You're not all over the place. You're not losing it. You're not forsook. No, it doesn't matter your situation, what you find yourself in, what you're going through. God is on top of it, and he's going to use it all to work together uh, for our good. And so I do praise God for that. Uh, at this time, uh, I am finished. It took a little, maybe a little longer than I, I wanted it to, but we're going to bring a selection uh, from our, uh, from victory, not victory praises of, of <laughs> BC3. They, please forgive me, you all, because they take that personal. Uh, hold up. But a BC3 uh, choir from probably a few years ago, is they're going to come and render us a song immediately following that. I'm so happy uh, to replay a message from last Sunday from uh, my spiritual apostolic covering, Apostle Trevor Banks from Resurrection Life Family Worship Center. Uh, we'll play the message entitled Kingdom Faith, Kingdom Faith. And so let's set our hearts before the Lord and uh, be blessed in Jesus' name. And I'll come back afterwards.
Amen. We can go ahead and, and play the message uh, from Apostle Banks. I want to start in a series simply entitled Kingdom Faith. Most have come to the conclusion, hopefully, that if we're going to defeat and overcome the systems of the world, it has to be by faith. Faith is not an old dusty sermon that you just pull out. No, the just shall live by faith. Amen. Under girding everything that we do, envision, speak, must be faith. So we're going to talk about that kingdom faith. I want to talk to this morning about unwavering faith. Unwavering faith. Let me give you uh, three major uh, characteristics first of kingdom faith. Number one, kingdom faith is steadfast and stable even in the midst of storms. I said kingdom faith is steadfast and stable. Even in the midst of storms, you know, life storms. <laughs> I think a good example of kingdom faith would be uh, the example of Job. Uh, under the pressure that he came under when the enemy sent a storm into his life. One thing about Job, he, he questioned God. In the 42 chapters that we see, he questioned God, but he never turned his back on God. Amen. Let me make a statement here. This is important. Don't build your faith on what God shows you. Build your faith on God. Amen. Don't build your faith on what God shows you. Build it on God, period. Amen. You know, Job, without even understanding, his faith was steadfast and stable. Without understanding in the midst of his storm, he kept on believing and living in truthfulness integrity, faithfulness, and he kept his conscience clear. In good times and in bad times, whether, whichever it was, Job trusted God as Lord of both. He said to his wife, when his wife said, why don't you just curse God and die? In so many words, Job said, you know, we bless God in good times. Let me just paraphrase. Why shouldn't I bless God in difficult times? Because I'm not, I'm not uh, uh, building my faith on what God shows me. I'm building my faith on God, period. Number two, kingdom faith is in God's omniscient knowledge, not in your limited knowledge. Kingdom faith is in God's omniscient knowledge, not your limited knowledge. Kingdom faith accepts with humility the reality of our limited knowledge and confidently leaves the rest in God's hands. That's why you, you cannot build on what you've seen even though it comes from God, build on God, period. Because scenes might shift. Amen. 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 
uh, di different players may enter the picture you didn't see. Uh, things may take a route you didn't expect. But, but continue to build faith on God, period. Okay, Lord, I didn't see this coming, but I know you're still in control. I know that you're the one guiding my steps. You're the one that's making the way. Amen. And number three, faith or kingdom faith is beyond our understanding. Kingdom faith is beyond our understanding. Humility is the only appropriate response to a revelation that God gives to us. Humility. Because kingdom faith is beyond our understanding. If you look at Job chapter 42, verses 1 through 6, the book of Job. After all that Job suffered and went through, he said in Job 42, verses 1 through 6, then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do everything and that no thought can be withholding from you. Who is he that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee and I will speak. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Wherefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. It was after that that Job, that God turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends and that, but kingdom faith is beyond our own understanding. So let me go back and say this. Don't build your faith on what God shows you or what you see necessarily. It may indeed be from God. Don't build your faith on that. Build your faith on God, period. Amen. Amen. Times change, people change. Amen. You change. Amen. Everything changes but God. So let's talk a little bit about unwavering faith. Hebrews chapter 10. Let's start at verse 22. Hebrews 10 verse 22 through 25. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Somebody say without wavering. Without wavering. Now remember, we're not building on what we have seen. We're building on God Amen. who is the same yesterday. He, he was the same before COVID. Amen. He was the same during COVID. Amen. He'll be the same after COVID. So, so we build on him before COVID. Amen. We build on him during COVID. Amen. We'll build on him after COVID. Amen. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. How many know we, we need to be provoking each other? Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about unto anger. Amen. But provoking each other unto love and good works. Yes. Amen? Amen? What does the next verse say? Not forsaking Amen. the assembling of ourselves together. Yes. As the manner of some is but exhorting one another 
And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Amen. So let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Amen. Skip down to verse uh, 35 of that same chapter. Chapter 10 of Hebrews chapter, chapter 10, verse 35 through 39. Okay, so tell someone next to you, hold fast, hold fast. the confession, the confession. Of, your faith. of your faith. See, someone ought to be strengthened right now because you have changed your perspective. You've taken your eyes off of what has been said to who said it. Amen. 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 God said it. Amen. Amen. You can rest assured. Amen. When you put your faith in God alone. You, you see, well, let, let, let me pause there a minute because the, the, word, of, the word of God talks about um, mammon. Mammon. Uh, you cannot serve God and mammon. Amen. Most people think mammon is just money. But it's not. Mammon is anything else you put beside God Amen. or that you put in front of God. Amen. Amen. Anything that you do that you put before God, you can put fasting before God. Amen. Fasting is in the word and we should do that. But fasting is not God. Amen. 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 You can put studying the Hebrew and the Greek before God. Amen. Studying the Hebrew and the Greek is not God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Study the Hebrew and the Greek. Yeah. Do you hear what I'm saying? At the end of the day, we must put our faith in Him. Yeah. Not in what we can do. Yeah. Get that back up for me. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise for yet a little while. And he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. Amen. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Tell somebody, but that ain't you. But we are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. That saving of the soul is not just salvation where we're, we go to heaven. No, the saving of you believe unto the saving of the soul. Your soul gets renewed. Your soul prospers here. See, God, our spirit is saved. Our soul is being saved. And one day this body, this, in, this corruptible body will put on incorruption. Amen. And it will be saved. But right now we believe unto the saving of the soul. See, the more your soul is saved. Do you understand? The more, the more your soul is renewed. The, the more uh, word that enters into your soul realm the more prosperous you are because you prosper even as your soul prospers. And so we, are, we believe unto the saving of our soul. That does, that does mean, yes, ultimately salvation, but it also means in the here and now. So, Daniel chapter 1 In verse number three. Daniel chapter one, verse three. And the king spoke to Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs, his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes. Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and tongue of the Chaldeans. 
And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name Belteshazzar, Hananiah, Shadrach, Mishael, Meshach, and Azariah, Ab Abednego. Verse 8. But, but, somebody say, but. but. In changing the name, they wanted to change the individual. Amen, amen, amen. And, and, and there, there, there is something to language and names. You know, at the Tower of Babel, it's, it's interesting. The people were, were of one spirit, of one mind. They were all on one accord, one language. And they were building, they were opening a portal. Uh, they weren't necessarily trying to build something physical that would reach into heaven. They were opening spiritual portals. Amen. And God saw them and said, if I don't go down and stop them, there's nothing withheld from them that they would, nothing they desire would be withheld from them. Amen. Because they were operating in spiritual principle in a wicked way. So what God did, God, God went down and he confounded the speech. He, he, he made different tribes or different people to have different languages. Amen. Now, now it, it, it isn't, he, here's what we need to understand. God didn't just give them a different language. But the language that he gave to each one caused them to take on another perspective to think differently so that they couldn't communicate you know like like words in certain languages mean different things to, to different ones this is what god did at the tower of babel so that he could he could hide his secrets see the the nephilim had taught them certain secrets and they were all on one accord and they were building. They, they, were, they were getting this thing done. And God said, I'm going to confound their speech. In other words, within their language, I'm going to hide certain secrets that they can't communicate to one another. Amen. So you see, it, it's, it's important that we learn language. Every technology has a terminology. Amen. We're talking kingdom faith now. So, so we, we can't talk about going up a rough side of the mountain and 99 and a half won't do. And you know, I'm hanging in there till Jesus comes. That's the wrong language. That'll give you the wrong perspective. You'll be hanging in there all right. No, we, we need to, to adopt the terminology of the kingdom. Amen. Tell somebody right now, I'm more than a conqueror. I always triumph. I'm a breakthrough believer. See, that, that terminology it, uh, it establishes a certain perspective that you have. So we see here that Daniel, in this verse, verse 8, it says, Daniel purposed. He purposed. All right, that's important. Daniel purposed. Tell someone right now, do some stuff on purpose. with intentionality you see you you're the only creature in the planet that is legal let me say that again humus all these dirt folks your body makes you legal in the planet that's why I tell somebody, we need our body. No body, no more legal. No body, no authority here. So we, we are legal. We're the only ones legal. And we must tell somebody, you got to understand the concept of the kingdom. John Wesley made a statement. He said, it seems that without God, Man cannot. How many would agree? <laughs> but he also said, and without man, God will not. 
Come on, we're going to bring some responsibility home to you. You can't sit on the sideline and be a spectator. As a matter of fact, God spoke to me this week and said he's about to eliminate a whole class of people called casual Christians. Take that for what you will, but that's what he spoke to me. I'm about to eliminate the casual Christian. Either the casual Christian is going to get on fire for God. If they remain lukewarm, he said, I'm going to spew them out. Somebody say amen real loud. God said, I'm about to eliminate a whole class of people. They're either going to get on fire or they're going to be spewed out. Called the casual, the Laodicean Christian. Matter of fact, Christian is only used three times in the Bible. Stop calling yourself a Christian. That's a religious term. Amen. They were called Christians at Antioch. Uh, Peter used the name Christian. And Paul used it one other time. And, and one, both two times it was used in a derogatory way. Tell somebody, I'm a saint. I'm a saint. Yes. John Wesley, again, he said, it seems without God, man cannot. And without man, God will not. On earth, man can do nothing without God. Amen. Come on. And God will do nothing on earth without man. Tell somebody, I got to be a partner with heaven in order for things to happen on the earth. Tell somebody right now, stay engaged. Tell somebody, whatever happens on earth depends on you, literally. I want you to look at somebody else. Tell them, whatever happens on earth depends on you. Literally. Why is the world in such condition that it is? Man has, has, has thrown off his responsibility and evil men have given or abdicated their throne to Lucifer. Purposed. Daniel purpose. The word purpose, purpose means to set. It means to establish or to erect. It means to appoint, to assign something to someone. I like this part of the definition of the word purpose. It means to bring about change. To bring about change. To purpose. He purposed in his heart. And it means to bring about change. Let me see here. I'm looking for something here. Give me Isaiah chapter 46. In verse 10, we're talking about unwavering faith. We read in Hebrews where it says, let us hold fast the confession or the profession of our faith, keeping the word in our mouth without wavering, for he is faithful who promised. Isaiah 46 verse 10. The word declaring, talking about God Declaring the end from the beginning. Declaring the end from the beginning. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Interesting, the word declaring the word declaring, I want you to write it down, the word declaring, just as we wrote down the word purposed, because this is going to help you in your life to establish unwavering faith, faith that doesn't waver. See, when, when it says that God is declaring something, declare, the word declare, catch this, the word declare in this context has a causative effect. 
What do we mean? It has a causative effect. In other words, God doesn't declare it just because he knows it. God's not declaring something just because he knows it. His declaration causes it to come to pass. I say his declaration. That's what the word means there in context. He, he declaring the end from the beginning. His declaration, he's not saying it because he knows what it is. He's saying it to cause it to come to pass. So you see, there, there's something very important about what we say and the language we use in order to establish kingdom here in the earth. There's what you call kingdom faith that will establish the kingdom of God here in the earth realm. But you have to know the language. Amen. I said, you must know the language. So let me say it again. God declares or he uses, a, it's a causative effect. His declaration causes it to come to pass. So if we operate, which we do, like God operates, then we too must believe in our heart what we say shall come to pass. Amen. And of course the scripture says you shall have what you say. Now we're talking about unwavering faith. Give me uh, Romans chapter 4. Sometimes we can be guilty of speaking too quickly. Amen. Before, before we go to Romans 4, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Sometimes you can, you can be saying things out of, out of emotions that haven't been rooted yet in faith or in trust. And, and just speaking, you know, from what's going on around you versus, you know, having faith in God himself. Amen. Hebrews 11, three says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things that do appear. Before faith speaks, I'm talking about kingdom faith, before faith speaks, it frames out something. We know that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Ever before God spoke, he framed it out. Do you, do you understand? He, in, in other words, he, he framed out the outcome. What he wanted first. Before he spoke. Before he released it in his mouth. Because God doesn't declare it because he knows it. He declares it to make it come to pass. So see, there's something you should know in your mind, uh, an image that you have in your mind that you have gone through uh, all the rooms and you, you see clearly the vision, right? The vision plain. And, and once the vision is plain, then you begin to declare because it has a causative effect. God framed out uh, the worlds. He, he, he framed it out. Or let me say, if this can make sense to you, he framed out the outcome. See, some of us must graduate from just hope to faith. You're hoping for the best, which is commendable. But faith, now faith is the substance of the thing you're hoping for. The evidence of the thing you don't see yet. So you got to graduate from just hoping and the praying. Well, child, I show sure hope. So no, stop hoping. Amen. Come on, exercise, exercise some kingdom faith. Come on, make the declarations. What? The declarations have a causative effect. But don't talk, be talk before the time. Frame it out in your mind first. See it, amen. Do some study on it. What is it you really want? What is the outcome you really desire? 
Oftentimes you, you, you're thinking too small. And you're listening to the wrong people. And you're looking in the wrong places. God's bigger than all that. I said he's bigger than that. He's better than that. Time to graduate from better to best. Amen. So, so like God, before faith speaks, it frames the outcome in the heart. Stop allowing people to back you up off of your confession of faith. Because they, they bring you some information you didn't know. It was probably good you didn't know it. Because until they brought you that information, you was full of faith. Now they done deterred you. Amen. Distracted you. Now you're trying to figure it out. You're putting your faith on circumstance and on what God said and not on God himself. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are, what the information is, what someone said. It doesn't matter when your faith is on God alone. God, I know they saying this, but you said that. How many know God doesn't change? He's not going to change up on you. Amen. Make you ashamed. Back up off of you. And say, well, you know, I didn't mean it that way. And, you know, circumstances are this way. So, no, God, listen, God can change some stuff overnight. Hello, somebody. As a matter of fact, there's some stuff coming toward you. You don't see it yet. Hello, somebody. I said, there's some stuff God has coming toward you, but he hadn't revealed it to you yet. Amen. He's allowing your faith to get robust. Your trust in him to get strong. Your roots in him to go deep. Amen. You've been tossed to and fro. You've been through the ringer. You don't look like what you've been through. Amen. But God is about to answer you. God's about to come through for you in a major way. Anybody ready for that? In 2022. The devil is a liar. God's about to bring a double portion. He going to prepare a table in the midst of your enemies. You keep declaring. Declaration. I said declaration has a causative effect. See, see your, your declaration of faith, your prayer of faith is not religious activity. Here's what it is. It's legal activity. Hear what I'm saying? I'm not talking about legalistic. It's legal. You, you are the authority. Humus, you are the authority in the earth. Men ought always pray, always decree, and not faint. Amen. Amen. Why? We are giving God legal access to interfere with this stuff down here, to cause kingdom to come. Amen. I said to cause kingdom to manifest. But when you're talking another language, when you're talking unbelief and doubt and fear, you're binding the hands of God. Let me give you some a couple of acronyms. These are from a long time ago. I ran across them again, and I said, let me just throw these out again. The acronym for fear. This is original. I need to patent this. <laughs> F-E-A-R. Frightening events. Altering realities. You can use that wherever you go. I give you legal right to. <laughs> Frightening events. Altering realities. People allow fear to alter their reality. How many of the devil is a lie? Now the acronym for faith. Fear 
at its total humiliation. Fear tries to alter your realities. Faith humiliates it. Fear at its total humiliation. That's original too. <laughs> you can say you first heard it here. Now, our hearts must be fully persuaded. Amen. I want someone to make a declaration right now and say, no more wavering. No more, wavering. No more uncertainty. No more, no more fear here. I'm telling you, you are a world changer. You are a change agent. You carry the goods. What's in you causes the earth to respond a certain way. What you are carrying. So we refuse to walk in fear. We refuse to waver. We refuse to be moved by what we hear or what we see because our faith is not in what we hear necessarily or what we see. It's in God, period. Somebody say, God, period. God, period. Now, for some that might not understand, I'm talking about Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about just any God out there, the unknown God. I'm talking about Jesus, the one name given among men under heaven, whereby we must be saved. Our Lord and our Savior, the one that died for us, the one that rose for us, the one that has saved us. Tell somebody, I have an assurance. Do you, do you know all that's going on in the world? Do you know you have an assurance that, that God is going to keep you? Yeah. That God is going to protect you? Yeah. You are not appointed to God's wrath. Yeah. Go, tell somebody, God, God's not mad at you. You are his covenant child. You are not appointed to wrath. There are those that vessels that are fitted unto wrath. But not us. How do we know? Listen, the blood of Jesus. Some, some use that kind of loosely. You know, the blood. You know, they just know the song, the blood. And, and you know, they know from times in time past, the blood. But listen, what, is, what are we talking about? The blood of Jesus. God released his wrath on Jesus. On the cross, he took it all. The blood was shed. All God's wrath, every, all his anger was taken out on the cross. So when we talk about the blood, all God's wrath toward us was taken out at the cross. So we are not vessels fitted unto wrath. You better get that idea out of your mind. That, that God's angry and you're going to be destroyed. No, God's going to protect you. God's going to preserve you. You, Because Jesus took it all for us. Amen. I said Jesus suffered it all for us. But there are vessels that are fitted unto wrath. A thousand can fall at your right hand. Ten thousand at your left hand. But the Lord said it shall not come nigh you. Why? The blood of Jesus. The blood that was shed already is covering you, covering your house. But listen, tell somebody, you got to be obedient. And that's not a cuss word. Obedience. The Bible says, for we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God. Is that right? What is the prerequisite? What is the qualification that you love God? What does that mean? Jesus said, if you love me, what did he say? If you love me, here's the prerequisite. Here's what qualifies you. Keep my commandments. So evidently everything ain't working together for the good for everybody because they don't really love God. They may be church goers, but they don't love God. The name may be on the road, but they don't love God. God said, if you love me, 
This is it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And my, my father and I will come and make our abode with you. And we will sup with you and teach you and bless you. Behold, I stand at the door of your heart. And I knock. If you open up, I'll come in. Isn't that interesting? In Revelation, he's standing at the door. He's not even among the candlesticks anymore. People have pushed him out. In the name of science. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something about science. Science is not contrary to the word of God. Amen. And the word of God is not contrary to science. Amen. The devil has twisted this thing to try to make people think that they are polar opposites. They are not. As a matter of fact, miracles can be not so well. They, they have secret stuff that they can they can show you how many miracles can be wrought. You know how miracles are wrought? Mir miracles are simply God operating on a higher plane. It's not anything unusual. It's just it, when, when, you, when you operate on a higher plane, you can see these things. And, and it's not, you know, it's not defying necessarily an order that God has set. But the devil wants you to, make, to make people think, you know, that, that science and, 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 and theology or, or the things of God are polar opposites. They're not at all. Science lines up with. Amen. It actually lines up with everything that God is doing. The, the whole universe is based upon certain science. God did it. Where they mess up and make their mistake, I believe, is that they try to put the chicken or the egg before the chicken. Evolution. No, we didn't evolve as little tadpoles coming up out of swamp from somewhere. No, in the beginning, God created. Amen. God said, let man be. Amen. Let us create man in our image and likeness. There was a man, a fully grown man, not born of a woman, born of God, the son of God. His name was Adam. That's the first man God created. That's where it started. This evolution thing is a lie. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse, verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace of that is in Christ Jesus. Remember, grace is unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor, and enabling. And the things that you have heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit you to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Amen. No man that wars entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has called him to be a soldier. So endure hardness. As we started, faith, kingdom faith, is steadfast and stable, even in storms. Why? Your perspective, your focus is not on what's happening. Amen. Your focus is on a person. Who doesn't change. Amen. And you will find when your focus stays there. That, that God will console you. You can have peace. Even in this time of storms. In a time of challenge. In a time of persecution. In a time of adversity. You won't fear. Because your eyes are stayed upon him. Your heart is toward him. You are at peace. Why? Because you're not. Amen. Vacillating and wavering with circumstances. Your eyes are fixed. Give me uh, Romans chapter 4. 
And I think I want to start about verse 17. Tell somebody, you are not a spirit. You are not. Uh, let me say. Tell somebody right now, you don't have a spirit. You are a spirit. And you are a spirit having a human experience. You see, it's only in the, on the human side that there's the experience of death. Amen. Spirits don't die. Amen. They just transition. To be absent from the body, not some long, drawn out, dark tunnel. No, to be absent from the body means present with the Lord. Did you get that for me? Romans chapter 4. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. God talking to Abram. His name wasn't Abraham yet. But again, God using language. Come on, he's using language. He's declaring. Uh, it's, it's causative. He's declaring something over Abram that's going to cause it to come to pass. I have made you a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickens the dead and calls those things which be as not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope Amen. that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Let me let me pause there for a moment. Something just dropped into my spirit. God, God has, to, has to, in your personal life, listen closely, in your personal life, God has to drop certain principles. Amen. Someone sitting next to you may be operating in that principle, and you may not. Or you may be and they may not. But however, God has to drop certain things into our spirit, into our, into our environment, into our heart. Let me give you an example. God allowed Abram to be tested when he had Isaac in Genesis 22. He showed me this. I, th I thought, wow. <coughs> God said, offer your son. The son you love. Bring him to Mount Moriah and offer him a sacrifice. Abraham was obedient, right? We hear Abraham say, to Isaac at some point, God will, will provide himself a sacrifice. Amen. Right? So they go all the way up. He, he binds Isaac with the cords. He lays him on the altar and he draws the knife to slay him. And, and God, you know the story, God answers and says, do the boy no harm, for now I know. Amen. See, God had to drop a principle in the earth. Someone was willing to believe him, even if he had to slay him, that he would resurrect him. Because he was about to send his son to be slain. And so people would have that, that, that ability, that dimension to believe for resurrection had to be there. Amen. So, so he sent it to Abraham. Abraham said, though, though I have to slay him, God will resurrect him. So, so now God had dropped that into the earth 42 generations later. Jesus, even though he told the disciples, they struggled with it. But they believed that he was resurrected. Why? It was dropped into the earth. See, there's something God wants to drop into your life. Put on your life. I said, put on your life to where you become declarative, where you start declaring things. Amen. It may have never have happened before. God may want to use you as a forerunner, a trailblazer, doing stuff that's never been done before. Help me, Holy Ghost. Amen. But he had to drop it on Abram. Abraham believed it was counted righteousness to him. 
But God now, now says it's released in the earth because somebody caught it. Abraham caught it. 42 generations later, Jesus came saying, I will die, but I will rise again. So all the seed of Abraham had the DNA to believe in resurrection, resurrection power. Amen. So if, if there's something that's died in your life, if there's a dream that has been squashed out, snuffed out, get ready for some resurrection. Hallelujah. Get, I said get ready for some resurrection. It's in you to believe. I said it's in you to believe. <laughs> so get that back up for me and we're going to wind this up here. Who against hope, believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. God declaring, causative. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead. He considered not his own body, now dead. When he was about 100 years old. Neither did he consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Amen. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised Jesus or raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Amen. <laughs> So God declares it's a causative effect. He doesn't declare it just because he knows it. He declares it causing it to come to pass. There are four things I want you to look at. Number one, as you Rid yourself of all wavering uncertainty and become fully persuaded. Number one, like God, first choose the outcome. Don't be afraid to be disappointed. I said, don't be afraid that God will disappoint you. Choose the outcome. Formulate the outcome that you want. Speak the outcome. Number two, you must believe in your heart what you are saying is coming to pass. We're talking about unwavering faith, kingdom faith. You must believe in your heart what you are saying is coming to pass. It will be done. Spoken from a place of immovable faith. Remember, before faith speaks, it frames up the outcome. Speak the outcome. The heart has to be fully persuaded. Now, again, how? Spend time meditating on the word. And not the news. Amen. Amen. Listen to what God is saying. Listen in your heart to what Holy Spirit is saying to you. Keep your eye gate in the word gate. In the portal of God's word. As we behold as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, we are changed from glory to glory. It doesn't mean that we can't hear the news or be up on things that are going on, the newspaper, whatever. But don't let that become mammon. Amen. Amen. You can't serve God and mammon. 
Number three. Tell somebody, no more doubt. No more fear. Give me James chapter 1, verse 5 through 8. James, the book of St. James, chapter 1, verse 5 through 8. No more doubt, no more fear. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraided not. Tell somebody right now, God is not mad with you. Now, you may have been stung by a situation or some people or some issue or even sickness, whatever, and, and it's, 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 it's kind of threw you off balance. God's not mad with you. Amen. God is the same. He's the one that will restore your soul. Amen. He will refresh you. He will cause you to recover all. Amen. Wait upon the Lord. Give him time. Let him heal. Let him pour that balm of Gilead in there, into that wound. He's on your side. He loves you. He's covering you. He's keeping you. Amen. Get it back up for me. <laughs> if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Give liberally to all men and upbraid and not, and it shall be given him. Verse 6. But let him ask in faith. Yes. Yes. Say it with me. Ask in faith. Come on, say it again. Talk it to yourself. Ask in faith. Stop thinking that God's not for you or what you're asking is not for you. The word says, if any of you lack any of that, ask God who gives liberally. And he's not angry. He's not going to upbraid you, put conditions on you. Let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering for he that wavers. Listen, we're God confident. Our confidence is in God who doesn't change. He's not a statue, but he doesn't change. He's not, he's not some image sitting on a throne, not moving, but he doesn't change. Don't you like people that don't change up on you? People who, who's, their spirit is the same every time you see them. If they have joy, they're joyful all the time. If they're peaceful, they're peaceful all the time. Amen. If they're loving, they're loving all the time. Well, God doesn't change. Get it back up for me. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. In verse 7, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Verse 8. A double-minded, no more double-mindedness. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. But tell somebody, that ain't me. And that ain't you. We are people of faith. And number four, what do we labor for? We labor to enter into rest. There's what we call faith rest, where we're not struggling, we're no longer anxious for anything, we are God confident, and we are trusting him. Get me Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 through 5. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left of us entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed, because I believe, we which have believed do enter into rest as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath that they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into 
my rest. <clears throat> verse 9, skip down to verse 9. There remains, therefore, a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. Let us labor. This is the, this is the conclusion of the matter. All of our labor is to labor, therefore, to enter into that rest so that none of us fall after the same example that Israel had of unbelief. Let us labor to enter into that place of faith rest. Faith rest. God confidence. Not self-confidence. Not confidence in a set of circumstances, which way they're turning, but confident in the one who turns everything. Amen. 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 Unwavering faith. Unwavering faith. Rooted and grounded upon the word of God and God's presence. I want you to stand to your feet for a moment and lift your hands to him. I want to pray for you and release this whole dimension a fresh and a new. This year started off with a bang. And the enemy tries to show up when God starts things off with a bang. But understand, that's only an indication. There's coming a bigger bang. And a bigger bang. And a bigger bang. The God we trust is faithful. Yes. Lift your hands to him. And just surrender to him right now. Our endeavor, our goal is faith rest. Freedom from anxiety. Freedom from all fear. Seen or unseen. Father, such a deep and settled confidence in the God that we serve that we cannot be moved nor shaken by word, by spirit, by what the world does. In Jesus' name, Lord, I release this dimension, a fresh anointing upon all your children here, all under the sound of my voice. I release this dimension unwavering faith kingdom faith bold and secure strong humble and meek yet full of power unassuming yet discerning full of wisdom and knowledge and understanding yet casting care upon you I release it right now, Lord. The foundation that cannot be shaken. The people that cannot be moved. But that continue to grow. And increase. And enlarge. And expand. Thank you that all the promises of God are yes. And so be it. Now, Lord, may faith be stirred in the heart and the mind of all your children everywhere to never look back, but to keep pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus while at rest. We thank you, Father. We bless you and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, people of God, I, I don't even have to ask if you were blessed, uh, partly because um, I see the comments, uh, but secondarily because in the spirit, I can sense, I can sense the nourishment, the spiritual nourishment uh, that has taken place 
as we feasted on the word of the Lord. Um, I want to invite individuals to come and join in right now. Uh, we've been off mute and without our videos, but we're getting ready to close out. But I would love for us to close out uh, together. And so those that can, those whose backgrounds will allow, um, would you join uh, the rest okay. of the body? Would, would, would you join us? Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but I am so persuaded of God right now and what he desires to do uh, in the midst of these present times, what he's already determined that he wants to do in the life of his people. Uh, those that have come to know him and those have yet that are yet to still come to know him. And the beauty is that he wants to use us to accomplish this task. He wants to use us. Without God, we can't. But without us, he won't. Yes. He won't. And so uh, we celebrate uh, the word kingdom faith unwavering faith mm. i don't know about you all but it nourishes a part of me uh mm. that i've had in me since i was born and the devil is trying his best to keep us from tapping into that reality of who we know we are in christ jesus it's built in us to win it's built in us to overcome it's built in us to conquer it's built in us to operate and to exercise authority in the earth, man. It's, 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 we were fashioned this way. And so I praise God for counter frequencies to the, to the ordinary frequency of this world that would allow a casualty and, and, and chaos and, 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 and pestilence and, and, and all types of, of, of challenges that we presently uh, are navigating in this life to try to muffle out or to try to, 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 to drown out altogether the reality of our almighty, all-powerful, and forever faithful God. God yes, is faithful. He is faithful until the very end. And so I pray that each and every one of us, as we uh, have heard the word of the Lord, uh, I'm telling you, I was so mind blown because I, I didn't watch the message before it was played. So everything that I was sharing was from my time spent with the Lord. But to hear Apostle Banks come on, go to the exact text and talk about the exact same things. You all, God is real. Yeah. And he yeah. is that intricately in tune and connected with each and every one of our lives. The only thing is that he's, that he's asking for us to do is to believe, yes. to believe, believe God, believe God. In the beginning, God, God is calling us to believe God. And if we can just grab hold in this season, laying aside every weight, forgetting those things that are behind us because those things are just clatter and cl clutter and noise. They're, they're insufficient for the moment. They carry no purpose for our destiny. If we can just focus on this present moment that God desires continuously to be good to us and to give us everything that we need to carry out his assignment for us in this earth. Listen, we can not only take off, we can not only take ground, but God can accelerate us. He can supernaturally begin to move us in ways that mentally we never thought were possible. And this is the good news of the kingdom. And so I pray that all of us would not only be hearers of the word, but that we'll be doers also, that we would indeed guide, guard our eye gates and our ear gates, that we won't just leave this moment and go and flood our lives with everything that's counter what God has determined for us, but that we will be intentional about rehearsing what the Lord shared, be intentional about uh, cracking open the word of God and reading it for ourselves, that we'll be intentional about posturing our heart before the Lord in prayer, that we'll be intentional about our humility, right? Because when you encounter God's presence, 
there's only one response that's possible, and that's humility. It is the overwhelming awe of encountering the one who fashioned existence itself. It brings you to a place without feeling like you've been robbed, that you can render unto God anything that he asked for. And this is what we have to offer to a, a lost and a dying world. Not just Jesus in concept, but Jesus personified through the life of those who dare love him and keep his commandments. And so if you're on the line today, whether you're watching via Zoom, whether you're watching on Facebook, I know that there's a number of believers because I see their names and I see their faces. They're all praying with me about this moment. They're all agreeing with me about this moment as it relates to your life, because this is the day that you can make that decision to make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of your life. This is the day that is not about everybody else. It's not about what you've done or what's been done to you. This day becomes about now faith, what God has determined that he wants to do for you and through you and what you yourself will allow God to perfect in you as you surrender your life to God. So if you're here and you want to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, you can just pray the simple prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you for knowing me and seeing me, for calling me by name, for reaching me and ministering to me in the deepest parts of my heart. God, I have heard your word and I can feel your presence and your love. And this day, I accept you as Lord and Savior of my life. I divorce and I rid myself of a life full of iniquity and sin. And I receive your righteousness and I accept the call of God to walk the righteous way. I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. If you prayed that prayer, then let me tell you, if you believed in your heart as you said it out of your mouth, you've been saved. That's it. It's done. It is finished. You are part of the family of God. And from this point forward, it's all about continuing to doing what you did today, gathering with other individuals who are learning the way of Christ and determining to learn and to walk therein. If that's you, welcome to the family of God. If you want to put it in the chat that you gave your life to Christ, feel free to do so. Uh, I believe there's information that the, the team that's, that's handling the Zoom sessions uh, that they'll give you or how you can reach out to us via phone, email, or other means. But please, we are here for you. We love you. We're praying for you. We're excited about what all God has in store for your lives. Uh, if you're a breaker already and you're part of this local assembly, this local family, friends of breakers, we want you to know that we love you that we're praying for you, that we're believing for the best of God concerning your life. Kingdom faith is where it's at. Anything that's not faith is already sin. So let's continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Let's continue to move forward in the strength of the Lord and allow him to blow our minds consistently every single day. Uh, God is faithful. Faithful is he that called us who will also bring it to pass. Uh, so that's all I have for today. We've had a glorious time in the Lord for all those that helped to make this uh, experience what it became. Thank you so much for rendering yourselves to the Lord, your time, your energies, your talents. Thank you for your sacrifice of your sleep, some of you, and, 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 and just all that you do. We are deeply blessed because of you and the gift that you are to this body. Um, so let's continue to pray one for another. Hold up those that are navigating grief and loss from loss of loved ones. Hold up those that are dealing with ailments and illnesses. Hold up those that are dealing with hardships in their lives, that, that maybe their finances, their homes. Hold up marriages. Hold up singles. Hold up children. Hold up, you know, family members. Let's continue to pray and hold one another up. Amen. As we watch God just blow our mind, this is going to be the year that God literally blows our mind. Are you ready? Are you ready for it? Are you ready for what God is ready to do in and through you? If so, then there's nothing else 
uh, for us to say, but the church to say, amen. Mm. <laughs> amen. Amen. Let's pray. I'm not missing anything. Am I missing anything? Somebody is, tell me in the chat if I'm missing something. I, I did good. All right. Mm. Praise God. I did good. Praise the Lord. Um, let's pray. Let's close out. And let's remember also, we, we, we will be back reading the Bible tomorrow, tomorrow morning at 6.15 a.m. The Zoom link should already be out or probably will go out again every morning. Uh, join in. Feel free to join in. Feel free to be brave and, and be a reader. If you've never read before, be brave. Wake up a little bit earlier and be a part of this beautiful experience that we're taking on together. Uh, continue to pray one for another. All right. Let's continue to pray one for another. Father, we thank you so much. So, so much for what you have done and what you're doing. You're so intricately connected to all of the various details of our individual and corporate lives. And God, we're mind blown at your ways. We're humbled by your will. We're grateful for your love. And God, we're hopeful about the future. We're determined, God, to, to declare those things that be not as though they were. We're determined to speak words that will cause what isn't to become. We're determined, God, to not be wavery in our stance. We're determined not to have two opinions. And we're determined to ask you for the things that we're lacking instead of hiding in a corner somewhere out of shame. God, we're determined, oh God, to be true to you and to be true to who you've called for all of us to be. Father God, we celebrate your love, your goodness, the fact that you want to love on us and be good to us. God, help us to receive your love. Help us to allow our hearts to be receptive to your goodness toward us, that we don't become our own stumbling block, that we won't be the reason why we don't move forward because we reject your love. But may our hearts be open, tenderized, and moldable, and may our minds be renewed, Father God, daily through the washing of your word. May your spirit in us be revived, oh God, to guide and to strengthen us in all that we say and we do. And Father God, may we see the power of God go forth in a way that will cause others to say, what must they do to be saved? For this is ultimately why we're here. We're here that others might know the true and living God and that he might be made glorified through each of our lives. And so God, we rest in this God, that if you be for us, you are more than the world against us, that we're more than conquerors through Christ who loved us and gave himself for us. And so we're committed to walk this thing out day by day as you blow our mind continuously. We seal this prayer with all gratitude and thanksgiving in the name that is above every other name. And that is the name of Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. And we thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right, wonderful people. Let me see that smile. Yes, let me see that joy as Apostle Lindsay was saying, man, let that joy shine forth. Put it on your face. Put it in the chat. Put it on your profile. Amen. Praise God. I love you all. Y'all got some beautiful profile pictures. Let's try to keep our faces looking really nice like our profile pictures and we'll be all right. Amen. <laughs> We're going to be all right. I love you. God bless you. Thank you for your time. Go forth and have a victorious day. If you're going out on the roads, be careful, please. Uh, yeah. Be careful and may God's strength and his and his love guide you in all that you do. God bless you. We love you. Bye-bye.